my god, that is huge. This is the all-knowing Lotus Villa, and it's not your typical Hong Kong home. Picture this, 58,000 square feet of pristine, private terrain high up on the Nongping Plateau. Time stands still, and it feels like a hidden world of its own. And then there's the view. It gazes out towards Lantau's most iconic site, the Big Buddha. Imagine waking up to that. Oh my god, that is huge. Mm -hmm. That's huge! Mm -hmm. But here's where it gets even cooler. This spot, it was home to Hong Kong's first and only tea plantation, established way back in 1947. And living here was Brooke Bernanke, the first Westerner to ever settle on Lantau Island. So this isn't just a house, it's a remarkable piece of Hong Kong's history. But where did this all begin? The origins of the all-knowing Lotus Villa stretch back to 1920, when it began life as a nunnery housing three nuns who lost their lives during the war. Its early roots were intertwined with Buddhism, being just a stone's throw from Poland Monastery. In 1947, the land was acquired by Brooke Bernanke, an English lawyer, politician, and reformer. Deeply influenced by his time in Burma, Bernanke developed a passion for tea, transforming part of the adjoining lots into Hong Kong's first tea plantation, and produced tea under the Lotus brand label. From then on, the villa was used as a holiday home by Bernanke's family. To get there, we took a 30-minute drive from Tung Chung MTR station, passing through the lush landscapes of South Lantau's mountains, reservoirs, and beaches. Along the way, we caught a glimpse of Shek Pik Prison, perhaps one of the only prisons in the world that offer panoramic sea views. It's important to note that only residents and taxis can drive here unless you've applied for a day pass, so we're lucky to be getting this exclusive look at this incredible gem. So as soon as you come in through these wrought iron gates, immediately it feels like an entire new world has opened up. Off to the side, you've got bamboo shoots, so much greenery. Hi, baby! Going down the path, you'll find a tea garden formed in collaboration with the Chinese University of Hong Kong, as well as a quiet seating area with a pergola and a square swimming pool that would be perfect for a weekend of zero technology relaxation. The atmosphere felt quiet and zen, with butterflies and dragonflies flitting around. The garden also featured several archways, and with some fairy lights, the atmosphere would be undeniably romantic. Like, just imagine being proposed to beneath one. Like, wah! So over here, there are actually two diverging paths. The first one are these steps that lead you up to the house, but we're gonna check that out in just a minute. I wanna take you first to the place where Bernanke's family spent most of their childhood. So, if we go down this path first, you can see right over there, vegetation garden. You can grow your potatoes, whatever you want to grow, your tomatoes. And then over here, this is where the kids spent their time playing during COVID. Since you are outside, remember to put on your sunscreen, your insect repellent to stay safe. If you turn the corner, you'll find a beautiful green expanse, the croquet lawn. So over here, this is where everyone would play croquet, or if you wanted to, you could use this space for golfing, for badminton. Here, would do a demonstration, but because all the sticks are supporting the balls, so we're not gonna do that today, um, but you can just imagine. From here, you can see, even though there's so much going on inside, you actually can't see it because it's just surrounded by all of this shrubbery. So again, it feels kind of like out of a picture book or a storybook, you know? It just feels quite enchanting. The closer you get, then you realize it opens up to a whole new space. Going up the stairs, the house itself comes with plenty of outdoor socializing spaces, perfect for large family gatherings. So first things first, right in front of this house, we've got ourselves a 10-seater over here. I know I was super stoked earlier when the owner offered to let us have some tea here, and we were also going through the photo books, and it was just such a vibe. And then if you walk a little further, just right this way, you can see the big Buddha from here. But they can't actually see us because we are just surrounded, like completely shrouded in secrecy, thanks to these bushes and this greenery. And then off to the side, we have ourselves this nine-seater situation over here, just surrounding this fireplace, which I'm presuming was original. Overhead, we have this pergola as well, with tons of vines that have grown like, and are just wrapped around it. And I can only imagine how much time that took to grow um, just over the years. So that just speaks to the history of this house already. So the house exterior is quite modest. It's finished in these white tones for a very fresh look. This was the structure we started out with first, and then afterwards these two extensions were also added to enlarge the house. Very classic look because we've got these um, original door frames here with these delicate glass panes, but then also you can see some of that rust, though again, it reminds you just of the rustic charm of this place. 
The nameplate overhead reads Gott Li Yun, which actually translates to All-Knowing Lotus Villa. So there's a couple of inferences we can make from this. So All-Knowing may refer to the Buddha's omniscience, while the lotus part represents symbolically this journey towards enlightenment. Priced at 118 million Hong Kong dollars, this traditional cottage-like home comes with three lots measuring about 58,000 square feet in total. The house itself is around 2,500 square feet in size, featuring six bedrooms and three bathrooms. Though the home's surroundings are lush and tropical, the interior might surprise you with its charming English touches. Let's check it out. So as we step into the living area, ceilings are pretty sloped, also very, very high, and the space is incredibly well ventilated. We also have a ceiling fan here if you need in the summers, so not a problem. To the side, we have an original fireplace. This is an original working fireplace, so you can pick up the fallen trees in the winter time, put them here, get the fire started, warms up the entire house. This column over here is the chimney. The living room's soaring ceilings makes it Bernanke's descendants' favorite part of the house. Since lighting was more minimal, I appreciated the picture windows that allowed more natural light to flow in. The space was made even cozier with armchairs and a large chaise lounge, creating a warm and inviting atmosphere for guests. Just off the living room is a study featuring Brooke Bernanke's original wooden desk, an elegant piece neatly placed against the wall. The curved windows offer charming views of the garden and create a cozy alcove, a lovely space for relaxing in an armchair. This study connects to the ground floor bedroom, which was relatively spacious, easily accommodating a queen-size bed, two large windows with green views, and a wall-mounted TV. This room includes an ensuite bathroom. While there was no shower enclosure, I liked this large European-style wooden vanity with intricate millwork and a huge sink. A large window offers great ventilation. Next, a second entryway in the living room leads you to the formal dining room. And so here we are in the dining area. Now over here, just be sure to watch your head it's, as the ceilings do get a little bit lower. So you've got this tea set here, but then you also have the red. And then over here, also samurai swords, so more of an Asian theme. A glass door invites natural light into the room, and you can easily open it for fresh air while enjoying a cup of tea. Next to the dining room, towards the back of the house, is a traditional style kitchen. The brick L-shaped counter provides plenty of workspace, and the entire kitchen exudes a charming rustic appeal. A modern electric stove and oven ensures you can cook with ease, and a quaint white kitchen island offers an intimate space for a casual afternoon snack, blending old-world charm and contemporary convenience. The kitchen's high ceilings are complemented by two long hanging ceiling lights. The first floor serves as the rest area with a long landing connecting all five bedrooms. On one side, you'll find two bedrooms. This first one came with a unique basket weave ceiling, very much in the style of a classic English cottage. Next door, the guest bathroom is clean and well equipped with a shower, vanity, toilet, providing everything you need. The second bedroom came with much lower ceilings, but was also able to fit a large double bed flushed against the window. This room is known as the Susie Wong Room, or the Richard Mason Suite, named after the British author who penned part of his 1957 novel, The World of Susie Wong, right here. Once you cross the landing, we are in the master bedroom. First things first, despite the ceilings being a little lower, it still fits a lot of furniture. So if we've got this electric fireplace here, I can imagine how relaxing it is to be here in the winter, as this fireplace warms the entire space and then we've also got this chinese style wardrobe as well as a bedside table both finished in red tones for that pop of color what i want to talk about is just everything that's so unique in this space so first of all these beams which have been painted black you just don't see those every day in hong kong it's like a ladder that kind of just extends up again keeps the space a little bit low in terms of the ceiling height but again super unique and then you also have these quaint curved windows they're so they're so charming you know and i'm um, usually in terms of curves the thing about them is that it is a little bit harder to be able to find the space to fit other pieces of furniture in there perfectly but over here you have two bedside tables flanking the bed and then over here as you're working you can work from home by here of uh, looking out from the window you have a view of the big buddha again super cool not many people at all can say that they have that then we have a terrace that's connected to the master bedroom. Again, another really nice place to work from home or just relax, you know, your downtime. You've got this swinging bench chair here. I'm curious about that, so we're gonna take a seat. Um, ooh, it's been a minute. And then you can take the steps back down to go back to the first floor. So let's do that. 
The master ensuite also features a huge bathtub perfect for relaxing with a nearby window that lets in natural light and offers ventilation. The fourth bedroom also came with a sink. However, it was much bigger with a queen size bed occupying the center of the room. The fifth bedroom was equally spacious and offered a vanity with built-in lighting next to a large double bed. For a property as unique as this, what is the buying procedure? To learn more, we spoke with Camilla from Habitat Property. It's held under a BVI, so you need to have a cash buyer. And also, if you buy under BVI, you avoid to pay the property taxes in Hong Kong. Camilla also elaborated on the property's potential for expansion. There is a potential to build a second house, two-story house around 3,000 square feet. Or you can merge the new house together with the existing house. So you can then have a house over around 6,000 square feet. The garden itself uh, could be used like a retreat place, maybe do yoga or have for weddings or birthday parties things like that or just enjoy this special nature that we have up here and also up in Nong Ping uh, the temperature is a little bit cooler so it's very nice and fresh. The property itself is divided into three distinct lots with each offering unique opportunities for development. Two of the lots are uh, residential lots and the third lot is an agricultural lot. So on one of the lots there is an existing house already there used to be the nunnery and on the other residential lot, there's potential to build another property. On the third lot, the pure agricultural lot, there is uh, still some tea plants on that lot. The surrounding area offers a range of amenities specific only to Nongping. The Nongping 360 cable car is a five minute walk away, connecting you to the Big Buddha. Whether you're admiring the view from your terrace or taking a peaceful walk, this cultural treasure is right at your doorstep. Nearby, you'll find the Serene Poland Monastery. Nongping also offers local delicacies, including fresh tofu, a simple yet delicious treat that reflects the rich cultural heritage of the area. So that's it for this video today. I have to say this was probably my favorite house that I've ever toured. Um, it was just such an experience being able to explore the gardens, learn about the history, and I hope that you enjoyed it just as much as I did. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Squarefoot for more home tours like this, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!